Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something different. We're doing a cycle card interview. So we're at Huntsville Grand Prix in Huntsville, Utah with Sam and David Baird. They're the builders of the fantastic GN Thunderbug and the Gray Wolf. So we'll ask a few questions and get some answers on these beautiful cards. So how did you guys first find out about cycle cards? I found out about cycle cards 10 years ago from Popular Mechanics magazine. I think there was a, an article on the original car. Okay. And I, I decided I wanted to build one. At that time there wasn't any racing or anything, so I built my first car, went way overboard, but had a great time doing it. Mm -hmm. And when we came to the Huntsville Grand Prix two years ago, we brought that car and it, it weighed almost 500 pounds. It was so heavy, it really couldn't compete with the other cars. We decided we needed some regulation cycle cars. So we built these together. Fantastic. And so what's your background with metalworking? Because there's a lot of metalwork in both of these cars. Uh, I'm a professional master craftsman and I have a shop with 40 employees and I do architectural restoration work. I own a foundry so I can cast, I have sheet metal equipment. We basically have a state-of-the-art facility which is unfair for a lot of people. Well I think it shows but up in what you've done here because these are, uh, of the cards that are here, these are the most finished that I've seen that are most true to the actual inspiration cards. A lot of us take an artistic license because we can't make certain parts. Yeah. That's not been your limitation, which is good. So, so what's your background, Sam? So I am an actually I'm actually a manufacturing engineer. Um, so I've been graduated for about five, six years now, and I have more of a background in electronics, which is why I kind of added a few more little bells and whistles to mine. I do have my blinker working and other things, but I really wanted to learn some of the old techniques that my dad learned through the ages and wanted to carry that on. So this was one way I could do that. Fantastic. We'll start with the Packard. So. Let's get some video of the Packard, Stevie. So uh, tell us about the Grey Wolf. Well, I fell in love with this car 30 years ago. I saw a watercolor painting of it, mm -hmm. and I copied that painting, and we have it hanging in our house. And, and it just seemed to be a natural for a cycle car. This is so showing up a, in a few books I've read recently. Yeah. Uh, the first Super Speedway and a Clive Cussler book. This features in, one, in, a, in a fictional book. The car gets destroyed in, a, in one of the chase scenes. Well, in 1903, it was a... It was a world record holder, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because it was lightweight. It was one of the first cars with actual spoke wheels instead of the wooden artillery wheels on it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just been a fun project. Yeah, so what are some of the unique features of your front suspension? Because it's, it's definitely uh, a little more maybe prototypical or realistic to what the original might have been. It's very similar to what the original was. It has that transverse leaf spring, and I just had to figure out a way to put that on there and still get the stance and the look right. Mm -hmm. That's just how it, how it worked out. There's a lot of engineering involved, no matter what car you build. There's all kinds of challenges and problems that you've got to work out in your mind, and quite often you have to redo things two or three times to get them the way you really want them. How did you construct the hood? Is this welded or is it a shaped piece? It's welded. Okay. So it's shaped on an English wheel, and and then weld it all around the top. Around the uh, seam right here? Around the seam, yeah. Okay. And yeah. what gauge metal did you use? Uh, it's 50 thousandths of an inch thick. Okay. It's the same thickness I use. Is it 3003 grade? or? It's 3003. Okay. And then it's riveted with aircraft rivets. So okay. So they're not pop rivets. They're actually hammered rivets. Okay. So years ago, I built an airplane. and So a lot of the techniques that I used, I used building that airplane. Mm -hmm. It's fun to use them on a car. Well, they all they all transfer over, right? That's right. So let's take a look at the tail section, Stevie. So are these leather doors? They're leather doors. Okay. So that's what the original would have had. That's what the original had. Okay. Great. What are these pipes along the sides? The pipes represent the radiator of the actual car. That's how the engine cooled. It had copper pipes along the, the frame rails. Okay. It had a bomber seat. It's very similar to that with holes drilled in it. It also had a boat tail, which was much smaller on the original car. We had to take that artistic license to be able to get an engine in there. Sure. In the yeah, that's one of the things on cycle cars to get the motor to fit uh, where there is no motor on an original car. 
So that's always a challenge to get it, the packaging of it. So this is a Honda 200cc. And you have a differential? It's got a differential on it. What are you running for brakes? Uh, it's got a MCP okay. disc brake right there in the center in the transaxle. Right. It's well packaged. It's well done. And your wheels, are they Honda wheels? Or are I they remanufactured? I think they're Taiwan. Okay, so they're new new versions they're of the Honda wheels. wheels. Okay. Yeah. Show the cockpit a little bit in the inside. So what Sam a... actually, it's got a speedometer in it. Sam found a bolt speedometer that's a GPS. Mm -hmm. And it just runs off a little battery. And that's kind of a fun addition because you can track your actual speed and it doesn't add a yeah. lot of weight. That's spectacular. Is there anything else you, that is unique about this build that were a challenge that you had to overcome? No, no many. really. We just watched your video <laughs> and we copied your. Frame. Oh, you're cheating now. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, and we, since we were both building cars, we thought that's a great start. Yep. So. It, and, and you know what? There, and I've, I'll completely honest. I've copied somebody else's frame. I copied Dennis <laughs> Thomas's frame, who probably was inspired by, you know, something else, right? And yeah. everybody. We're all learning from each other. That's the purpose yep. of these videos, to say, hey, look, I, I see what he did. I think I can do that, right? So take away the fear. My you know? original car has rear suspension and dual disc brakes and way too much stuff. And I really enjoy building this simple. I mean, it's important that it be a simple car. Yeah. Keep it as lightweight as you can. You get really heavy and it just adds time to your project. And the car doesn't go any faster. No, it probably goes slower, in fact. Slower. Yeah. Yeah, the light is fast. Not quite as fun 30 to, drive, to 35. So. That's really what we top it out at. Yeah. So what kind of gearing are you running on it? This is, it's got a 10-tooth sprocket on the top and a 60-tooth sprocket. Okay, same as mine. It's at 10-60. It's a really good ratio for cycle parts. Yeah, seems really good. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, GM. So, Sam, this is your, your design, your build. Yes. I see a family resemblance in the tails. Yeah, we... Uh, we kind of use the same tail design. It kind of made things easier for him since it kind of fit the era. Uh, so we just use the same tail design. I may have modified mine a little bit. This looks like a stinger on a bee. It kind of <laughs> it does, does, right? It a little fits, bit. You know, the whole uh, design aesthetic, um, the Thunderbug also goes along with that name. Right. And so tell us about the GN Thunderbug. What, what is that? Where does that come from? So the GN Thunderbug is a car made by Mark Walker. So it was in 1922. There's different uh, years I've seen that people have labeled it, but 1922 is the most consistent. Um, he actually made his car later after modeling it after the earlier cars. So he had a little bit of creative license himself. He races at Goodwood every year, so you'll usually see this car. So is it a new creation of an old car? Yeah, it was a new creation of an old car. Oh, okay. So he modified the engine. The original engine on that car was a off of Curtis Jenny. Um, he modified it so he took two cylinders off and then he used that as his engine so it's not the exact same engine of the period car but it follows the same um, it's same spirit of the time uh, going with the aero engine kind of uh, feature fitting with the, the same kind of uh, airplane that was flown around that time and this car has quite a bit of patina is that painted on yes that is uh, painted on uh, when I brought this last year it looked too clean that was almost the thing I heard from everybody and it was something I kind of felt myself. So uh, after that, I came back and I said, it has to look old, it has to fit that time. So I painted the wheels, they had the original chrome look, now they're black. Um, I went over it with, um, it was basically gel coat and some oil paint mixed together. And you kind of dab it on, you rub it off with a, with a rag and you kind of get this kind of look to it. It makes it look old, okay? Um, once we had it done, it just looked natural. It looked like the way it needed to be. It really suits it. What is? What have you got for the phony motor up here? So the phony motor was actually made from a modification. Um, well, I took the cylinders off of a, a gas mod kit for a bicycle. So I bought two of those cylinders. They kind of uh, fit the design I wanted so I could put those uh, the rockers, the exposed rockers on the outside. Uh, on there. I 3D printed some of these. So the rockers themselves, the stand for the, the motor for each cylinder, uh, those were 3D printed as well. It's mounted on aluminum plate and all the pipe is made from just PVC that was bent and we painted so it. So this bit here is, is PVC? Yep, that's PVC, just bent. All the little um, uh, stand uh, stands or uh, components that attach were all 3D printed as well for those PVC connections. 
What did you use for springs? These look really heavy. <laughs> they are heavy. So I was just looking online at leaf springs and I found this like 70% off Chrysler leaf springs online. And I was like, heck, I'll buy those. Didn't really know much about what I was doing at the time, but I was like, hey, they're cheap, so I'll buy it. So I got those and they actually work pretty nice. So were both of these cars built at kind of in tandem at the same time? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we kind of went through the same kind of process between each car. We'd work on one car, figure out the steering, and then we'd use the same idea on the other car. So they have the same um, lever arm right here. So this is a good example of, for example, some people are now building, you know, ready-made frames. And the concern is that all the carts are going to look the same. But these two carts definitely share a lineage, but they're obviously distinctly different. So it's a good distinction to make that these cars, even though you might have a similar frame or similar design, you can come up with completely different looking cars even built in the same workshop. I mean, same suspension design, but look at how vastly different these two cars turn out and the way they look. And the strong impression of a, of a inspiration car. It's not just something that looks like maybe a 1920 something that was maybe invented at that time, but this actually looks like a real, what the real cars look like. You could look at a picture of the Gray Wolf and say, yeah, that's definitely the Gray Wolf, or look at the picture of the Thunderbug and say, yeah, that's definitely, obviously this is a Thunderbug. The color does it too, but the, the design of it. You guys did a great job on these. I'm super happy for you. These are really yeah, good representations so of what cycle karting is all about. You, you know, I know you already had some pretty advanced skills, but I'm sure you learned something too when you were doing this with your uh, yeah, dad. Yeah, I right? learned a lot. I'm still working on some of those skills, so well, it just happened to work out when we did it. So, well, thanks guys for, for participating and showing us your cars and sharing your cars with us here at Huntsville, and uh, we're looking forward to some fun racing action. Not real racing, but action tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. At the Huntsville Grand Prix. Thanks, fellas. Thank you. Thank you.